What's up everyone? All right, so today is another Red Day recap, which is a great opportunity for you guys to learn from my mistakes. So today I maxed out with three trades and I had three losses. And my rule right now is pretty much if I have three back-to-back -back losses, I'm done. And it's a rule that prevents me from getting too frustrated because after three losses, you can just start to feel really frustrated. A fourth loss, a fifth loss, and you're starting to pull your hair out. You're like, what's going on? This is crazy. So I just say, if I have three losses in a row, I'm done. And that's kind of the max loss that I'm using. So if three losses equal $1,000 in losses, I'm, I'm done. If it equals 5,000, then I'm done. If it equals 8,000, I'm done. But right now it's pretty much just three losses. If I do max out with a really big loss in one trade and I'm down $7,800. At that point, I'm pretty much just done for the day. It's just so hard to recover from that type of loss. And so today I finished down a little over $4,000 from those three losses. Now, the first trade I was up about two cents on and it wasn't enough to take profit. And so I really just was never in the green and I ended up losing about eight cents per share or maybe it was 10 cents per share. The second trade I was up on, I was up about $700, but it was with small size. And I thought the trade had the potential to go further. So I added and went up to full size and then ended up losing like 750 bucks. So that was a, not a big loss. You know, I was up a little bit, not really as much as I wanted to be. Didn't sell, ended up turning into a loss. The third trade, I got into for a breakout, a first five minute candle to make a new high, what is typically a really nice setup. And I'll show you on the chart. I got in for the first candle to make a new high. It popped up about 15 cents, but immediately dropped it. I mean, it, it just, it totally did a false breakout. So it popped up 15 cents and then it dropped about 60 cents. I mean, it just totally dropped. I stopped out of that one with like a $2,200 loss. And at that point I was like, that's it. That's my third loss. I'm done for the day. I'm not going to try to fight it any longer. I'll just be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. So, you know, it's one of those days that is a little bit frustrating, but I made sure that I walked away before I really maxed out on my frustration level. Because I don't like to go to that level of frustration with myself or with trading or with the market. I just, I want to take the stress level down. So three losses in a row. That's it. I'm out. I'll be back tomorrow. But uh, why don't we break down all of the trades here for you guys today? Because I want you to really see the details of uh, what I was thinking, why I took the trades, why my accuracy was poor, so you can learn from it. So you can hopefully be uh, a little bit more profitable as a result of learning these uh, little lessons. All right, so let's break it down in today's midday market recap. All right, everyone. So we're going to break down uh, the trades from this morning. Um, you know, let me drag up my uh, platform here so you can see. So uh, red on three names, no trades in the IRA today, which is uh, for the best. IRA is just kind of um, not doing much right now until I see A quality setups. And I mean like for the IRA it has to be A plus quality. It has to be a almost perfect setup that I have like 100% uh, conviction in that it is really gonna work. Uh, anything less than that is just um, not really worth it right now. So let's see. Um, so I'll move that back down here. So my main trading account, as you can see here, down uh, 4700 bucks this morning. You know, three red trades, a little bit frustrating. And, um, you know, I, I'm trying to throw in the towel after the three red trades and not uh, push myself to the level of getting really, really irritated. Uh, today, just we didn't see follow through. So first trade of the day was CAPR. This was our leading gapper. And I thought because it was our leading gapper, it was the one that had the best chance of uh, popping up and retesting the pre-market highs. So I jumped in this um, at two t with an average of 219, 15,000 shares. And my goal on this was just to try to get 10 cents profit. I wasn't thinking I would get a 15, 20, 30 cent winner. I was gonna try to get in right here at 220 and sell at the pre-market high of 235. And if it opened up and squeezed up to 240, 250, I would scale out more, but I'd be taking profit around 235, 230. Uh, unfortunately, I got in and it popped up to 225 and then it rolled over. And so I stopped out 
basically like a minute after I got in as it dropped down here, selling in two smaller orders of 7,500 shares each. So, you know, I probably should have gone smaller on the size, but I did think this had a really good chance of popping up uh, and retesting the pre-market highs since it was our leading gapper. I thought it would be the one that everyone was watching this morning. And maybe it was, but it just obviously didn't work. So that started me out with a $1,700 loss right away, which is, you know, obviously not a great way to start the morning. My next trade was CC, uh, sorry, CHCI. This one, um, I put out 20,000 shares of buy orders, but I only filled uh, 2,900 shares. Uh, I was, once I realized I was having a problem getting filled, I put out uh, this additional order. I started with 15,000 shares and went to 20,000 uh, when I realized the first ones weren't getting filled. This got halted at 279. I got filled all at 270. I then added at 289 and 294 on the resumption from the halt. But look at what happened. We resumed from the halt. We tapped a high of 210 and then it just faded all the way back down to 258. No follow through. Again, you know, if I stick with my guns and follow the rules, I would wait for the first pullback. And in that case, I never would have even taken this trade because it didn't have a good first pullback. Um, you know, it just ended up rolling over. Uh, I sold 2,500 shares at 209 and the rest at 274. So ended up being a total loss of 750 bucks, which isn't that bad, but still disappointing. So now I'm, I'm two red trades into the day down 2,400 bucks. Uh, third trade was on BSPM. So BSPM, I saw on the scans and I was watching for the first five minute candle to make a new high right here. Now, what's interesting is that on the ask, we had a 70,000 share seller at 430. So right here, we had this seller kind of holding up, uh, you know, potential momentum above 430. But as we started to see that seller get bought up, he went 70,000, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, boom, boom, boom. That's when I jumped in at 430, expecting that we would break that level, which we did. And we would retest pre-market or high of day, which we did. We tapped 445. And then we instantly dropped all the way down here to 380. This was a very harsh rejection. Uh, this is what we would call a false breakout. And with my accuracy at overall 68% uh, over the long term, this is just one of those trades that, um, you know, is, is going to be a loss. There's not a lot that I can do about this in terms of uh, predicting this type of false breakout. This could have easily held up and broken over 450. And it just didn't. It got rejected. There's not really any way to predict this I mean, it, it really could have just as easily gone the other way. This is just going to be part of the time that you get in, you stop out. As soon as it started to break down, I stopped out at 220, or 420 and 409. So I minimized the loss by a lot. I didn't hold all the way through this drop. I stopped out fast. But, you know, even so, it was a $2,300 loss. And so with that, I said I'm throwing in the towel and I'm not going to, you know, keep pushing it. So... Reflections on today. What could I have done differently uh, today? Well, on my very first trade on CAPR, I, there really wasn't much opportunity to take profit. I was never really up on the trade. I mean, it, it popped up to being up five cents for a second, but it didn't hold up. So could I have sold this a little bit sooner? Maybe. 210 and 206, I, I maybe could have sold it five cents sooner. I could have minimized the loss a little bit. I could have also taken smaller size on it, given the fact that, um, you know, the market was red this morning and we weren't really sure that we were going to see good follow through today. There wasn't a lot on the gap scanner. This wasn't my favorite stock to trade. So maybe I should have taken smaller size on it for those reasons. And uh, that would have minimized the loss. So that's probably the two things I could have done differently on this one is smaller size and stopped out maybe a little faster. All right, next one, CHCI. Well, on this one, 
you know, I got in quickly because this is a stock that I made like $30,000 on, um, you know, back here in November. Was it November or when was this? Um, uh, we had a couple of really great trades on this one. So this is a stock that I've done well on. And as I saw it popping up, I thought, okay, you know, this it makes sense to jump on it. So I wanted to get in it quickly, uh, which is fine. The luck of the draw is that I only filled 2,900 shares. If I'd filled 15,000 shares at 170 and sold it at 209 and 205, I guess that would have been a winner. I added, and maybe I should not have added. I should have waited for the first clean pullback to add. And then I would have probably stopped out either break even or with a small profit instead of a loss. So I'd say on this one, I shouldn't have added here on the resumption of the halt even though that's worked well in some instances. In this case, given the choppiness of the market and the fact that I was already red on the day, I should have waited uh, to add. So that would have reduced that loss. And then BSPM, I think, still would have been a loss. Um, I don't think there's anything that I could have done to prevent this. Stopping out maybe a little faster would have helped minimize it a little bit, but um, obviously it... 10 cents was good on that, and then it dropped fast, and so I got slippage. So I think in hindsight, what I could have done differently today is perhaps traded with smaller size, given the fact that the last three days have been a little bit choppy, and we didn't know if today would be clean. So until I really saw good momentum, I probably should have traded with smaller size today. And if I traded with smaller size, maybe I would have been able to cut these losses maybe in half. I probably still would have had most of the same trades and some of the similar losses, but the losses wouldn't have been as big. So today, obviously, I was trading with larger size, pretty much as big as I've been trading any time in the last month. I mean, this is pretty much my full size to trade 10,000 to 15,000 shares. And maybe today wasn't the right day to be that aggressive. So that's probably what I would say. Uh, is I should have been a little more responsive to the overall market in choosing my share size today, and that would have helped minimize the losses a little bit. You know, because at this point right now, I made one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars in uh, January, and now in no or in um, uh, February here, I'm down about ten thousand dollars. So you know, I'm really kind of getting myself deeper into the red on the month than I would like, and. A 10,000, I mean, being up $10,000 on the month for me would not be a very good month, but it's certainly better than being down 10,000 on the month. So at this point, I need to make 20 grand just to be up 10,000 on the month. So, you know, I, I kind of have my work cut out for me here. Um, it doesn't take much to make 20 grand when we have really strong markets, especially with 10 and 15,000 share positions. But if the rest of February is going to be a little bit slow, I definitely will have to uh, adjust my share size. So I would say tomorrow I'll be trading with smaller s share size until I see something that really starts to take off. And uh, that's what will probably create the next round of really strong momentum. We know that momentum goes in, in cycles. It goes in waves. And so what I encourage you guys is that on days when you see that I'm in the red or that you know, on a week where momentum is kind of faded, that you spend this time really studying up on the last momentum cycle. Because when the next one starts, you want to be able to really capitalize on it. You know, when traders see me making ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 in a day, and that's what gets them excited to join us or, you know, to start learning how to trade, that's great, except for the fact that during that hot streak, they're not going to be trading with real money. They'll be, they'll be paper trading because you don't just start and trade with real money on your first day of you know, taking a class. You, you, you train first. So training while the market is red or choppy actually teaches you really good discipline and it's an opportunity to build up your skills so by the time the next momentum cycle starts, you're ready to really capitalize on it. So I would kind of think of it like that as, you know, this is an opportunity for us to train, to be disciplined and uh, when things start to pick up again, we'll be uh, in really good shape for it. So for me, bringing down the share size a little bit until things start to open up and look better is going to be important. Uh, certainly scalping the small wins when you have them is important. Today, that would have meant taking small profit on CHCI. And BSPM, 
it really there was really no opportunity to take profit for me at 45 it just it flashed up there so fast if we look at the 10 second chart uh, you'll see how how just this tapped 45 on one candle and then came right back down so this was the area where I started to get a little nervous and I sold it at 20 and then at 09 so I was selling early in the in the drop but you know this it was quick you know it, it didn't give us any opportunity really to sell up there but in general taking the smaller profits when I have them and um, trading with smaller size so I can go back to just kind of grinding on $500 to $1,000 a day while the market's choppy. And then once we start to see that one stock that goes up 100% in one day, that's when it'll be time to put the pedal to the metal and get aggressive again. But right now it's gonna be time to um, you know, be disciplined, be patient, and um, you know, it's a little bit of a challenge for all of us, including for myself for sure, but it's uh, definitely gonna teach good discipline and, and then when things pick up, we'll be able to be, um, you know, that much more profitable. So my IRA is at ten thousand five hundred dollars. I was at eleven thousand three hundred, and then I lost eight hundred bucks. So um, this one, well, I started at eight thousand three hundred, and I made money, and then I lost, had one losing trade last week. So uh, on this account, I'm not going to take anything probably until we're in another hot hot streak because I don't, you know, with I can only take 2,000 to 3,000 shares of most stocks and I only have three day trades per week. So I don't wanna lose my day trades on $50 and $100 winners. I'd rather save them for that one day where we see amazing opportunities and I'll take all three trades in that one day. That's probably what I'll end up doing. So um, anyways, that's about it for me today. Um, as you can tell, I'm not really that, um, bummed out it, you know yeah it's a red day but it's not really that big of a deal again keeping things in perspective one hundred seventeen thousand dollars of profit last month these are just you know a couple of pullback days before the next leg up so make sure you guys are studying getting yourselves prepped and ready because when the momentum is back you're going to want to make sure you can uh, jump in and really capitalize on these opportunities all right so that's it for me today i'll see all of you back here first thing tomorrow morning for pre-market analysis around 9 9 15. All right, I'll see you guys in the morning. If you're still watching, you must have really enjoyed that video. So why not subscribe and get email alerts anytime I upload new content? Remember, when you subscribe, you become a member of the Warrior Trading family.